Hey there, Polly399. Welcome to your last tutorial video. We're going to do a lot of stuff in this one, but I'm going to try to be quick. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can select provinces for vote choice because everybody who's using vote choice in Canada as their dependent variable needs to know how to do this. I'm going to show you how to run a regression and I'm going to talk to you about survey weights. And this will make a lot more sense alongside next week's lecture content, but you still need to know how to do it in Stata. Okay, so question, how do you select some cases but not others for like a frequency distribution or for a crosstab? Uh, and this would be like the, I know I'm running like vote choice for English speaking Canada, which means I need to kick out Quebec. How do I do this? Or you could be, I'm looking at vote choice in Quebec and I need to only deal with Quebec. How do I do this? Uh, what I'm going to show you here is, you know, you've got the general format of, um, uh, how you would do a cross tab uh, right here, right? So you've got your, you tab your dependent variable, your independent variable, comma, and all your statistics, right? If I'm going to do this so that I select some cases but not others, I would do tab DVIV if um, province uh, either equals something, comma, call, chi, B, or, so that's if I want to do it in like Quebec, or I could do tab dependent variable, independent variable, if, if my province does not equal Quebec in that case, call I B. Okay, so this is gonna be your general format. If you're sitting there and saying, oh, this looks an awful lot like um, what I would do for a controlled cross tab, yes, that would be correct. The general format, if you're going to be doing it with a control variable, would be my tab, my dependent variable, independent variable, if province, say, does not equal Quebec, and control variable is that first category. And then you would always add on your options there. Okay, so for anybody who's doing vote choice, this is what you're going to see for all of your partial tables, right? This is going to be your main relationship, if you're using vote choice and you don't want Quebec say, you've got to do that not, not it right there. Uh, and then this is how you would add it together for, um, for you're doing your partial tables and stuff like this. Okay, so just to give you a quick example of what this looks like, um, here's a vote choice variable cleaned up. So I've got liberals, conservatives, new democrats, and bloc. Uh, and it looks like, you know, the Liberals won, the Conservatives came a close second uh, in terms of popular vote. So, like, they got, Liberals got the most votes, Conservatives very close behind them. The NDPs, like, have dropped considerably, but it looks like the bloc is, like, nowhere to be seen in terms of the national uh, vote choice. Uh, here, I want to show you, like, here I'm pulling out the province for the post-election province survey, um, or the post-election survey, the province variable from that. And here I can tell that, see, Quebec is this category there. It happens to be category 11. And so if I want to run the vote choice variable, this guy, again, just for Quebec, I have to do the tab vote choice if this variable that tells me what the province is really does equal Quebec. And here you can see the block support suddenly makes a whole lot more sense. So the liberals get the highest proportion of the popular vote, but the block is like a solid second. Like clear, clearly the liberals are pulling down way more votes than anybody else, but like the block is clearly the second place finisher. The NDP vote in Quebec totally collapsed in 2019 and the conservatives are doing better than what they, yeah. Like I wouldn't want to verify this compared to elections Canada because typically the conservatives don't do like super hot in Quebec. Um, how would you do this if you wanted to like not include Quebec? You need to do this tilde. So like this is kind of like telling the computer it does not equal Quebec. It does not like run this variable um, for every category of this other variable except for this one. That's literally what you're saying. And here you can see a uh, very different set of results, right? So here actually the conservatives won the popular vote in uh, Canada outside of Quebec, um, and the Liberals finished a very close second. And again, NDP support is higher than what it was in Quebec, but it's still not great, or it's still much lower, right? Okay, so this is how you do it. You just have to remember that tilde squiggly bit. If you're trying to find it on your keyboard, um, 
the tilde squiggly on mine, it's shift and the key that's directly to the left of the number one. So that's what um, you need to run. Okay, now uh, if I'm going to put this in a high hypothesis, I've got vote choice and I want to look at the relationship between party identification and vote choice. And what I've got here uh, are like all of the options for party identification, but there are two different types. So you can see there's party identification, traditional, uh, and there are some options like it's traditional, traditional and party ID trad strong. And you do need to combine all of these two. And then you've got like partisanship, like that's effective and they've got effective one, two, and three. And so the whole idea behind partisanship is this idea that partisanship provides people with this perceptual lens through which they view the political world, right? So it's kind of like having party colored glasses on. Uh, and traditionally we would have thought it is like, oh, we just ask people like, which party do you identify with? And like, how strongly do you identify? So we're borrowing from the United States. Like if you look at the US, they have this nice linear ordinal scale where it runs from being a strong Democrat through to like weak Democrats, identifiers through independents into strong Republicans. And because they've only got the two parties, they can like kind of line them up that way in opposition to each other. But in Canada, because we've got like so many parties here, we can't measure it the same way, right? So what we do for the classic identification is that we do this kind of twofold. Um, is there a party that you feel closer to? Is there a party that you identify with? And if people say, yeah, then we say, oh, well, how strong? How strongly do you identify? by with them. I gotta say this, um, the, this text one is like just asking people like, what are the, uh, it's these 23 people who identify with another party. And because it's 23, we can actually see what they all are. So I find it interesting that like somebody selected the Bloc Québécois, uh, even though the Bloc was in the list over here. So folk be confused. Uh, Christian Heritage Party makes a pop. There's somebody who like wants to identify with more than one party at the same time. And then my favorite is this one, actually. It's the Natural Law Party. I barely remember these guys because I think we changed campaign finance law in Canada deliberately because of the Natural Law Party. So the Natural Law Party I won't go into much of their platform, but they really did like yogic flying. I'm not kidding. I'm so not kidding. And the reason why we know this is because back in the 90s, the way that the campaign finance policy used to be was that any registered political party could spend a certain amount of like the national limit on how much you could spend on your national campaign. And completely apart from how many votes they got, they would just get a certain proportion of their expenses back. So what this meant is that parties, even if they weren't, if nobody was voting for them, they could still spend in a campaign and expect like the public would actually reimburse them a bunch of those expenses. So what does the natural law party do? They take out like multiple like color full page ads in like national newspapers, like of talking about the merits of yogic flying, basically. I mean, so like on some, like, you can imagine the Canadian Taxpayers Federation just like losing their minds about this, but the natural law party really appeals to my sense of whimsy. Like I really do like this idea that some people care about yogic flying so much, so much that they're prepared to form a political party just so that they can like evangelize and proselytize about it under the auspices of running an election. I really appreciate that in 2019, like I haven't seen, like, I don't think the natural law party has been able to do this because we've like, you actually need to win votes at a certain threshold to get your expenses back now. Uh, and it's been like that for almost uh, easily 20 years, I think in the Canadian context. So that there's still this one person that like identifies with the yogic flyers that we've not seen or heard from since we changed the law that meant that they can't run their like really fancy ads about yogic flying. Anyway, it appeals to my sense of whimsy, and I feel like we could all use a bit of whimsy now. Anyway, I'm just showing this to you for these are the 23 people who, like, have a party identification. It just kind of doesn't, at least in theory, fit neatly into those categories. What I need to do is to figure out how to get this. In federal politics, do you usually think of yourself as, like, party combined with this one, with the, okay, so you identify with a party, but how strongly do you identify with that particular party? And what I want to do is I want to capture these, these folks. So people who are like, yeah, I identify with, you know, uh, 
the greens um and i identify with them very strongly yeah like that's somebody who's going to be a consistent partisan right or somebody's like yeah i identify with the greens and i identify pretty strong yeah totally um i also they're usually also pretty consistent in their in their identification the people i need to chuck out are these ones like and this would be the somebody who's going to be like i identify with this party but like not really like this is a person where i don't actually think that whatever identification they're giving me is I think it's genuine. I just don't think it's very stable or strong or enduring. And what I want to get out of these people who have a strong kind of enduring um, partisanship. And so what I need to do is to combine this guy or this variable with this variable. So here's how I do it. I've got, um, I'm going to make gen party ID. And I just want to see, have I already done that? Yes, I have. Okay, so I've generated it. And what I've done is I've basically taken the... Uh, greens and the none of these. So people who identify with like either a minor party or none of them. And I've made them a zero. And what I've got then is I've got a, the people who prefer not to answer, I've got them to be a nine. And so next what I'm doing is I'm going to say, okay, so of the people who are still left, like I'm keeping the ones, twos, threes, and fours as they are, because that's liberals, the conservatives, the NDP, and the bloc. Uh, everybody else is too small and I'm going to lump them all together. Like small identifiers, people who have no ID, like all that stuff. Then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so of the liberals, if they, I'm going to say, make them not identifiers. If they're either saying, I don't identify very strongly, or if they're going to say, I'm not going to tell you how I identify with it. So this vertical line here is just like, you recode like the liberals into like non-identifiers. If this variable equals three and, or if it equals four. And so it just is a nice way to get all of them into that line. Uh, you know, on my keyboard, the way to get this vertical line is again a shift and it's the key to the far right in between um, the return key and the delete key. Like it's kind of at the end of the top row of letters. Yeah, that's where I would find that. Okay, so I'm just gonna run all of these. So I'm gonna do it for the liberals, the conservatives, the new Democrats, then the block, then I'm gonna val put value labels on and then I'll have a nice party ID variable. Poof. There we are. So now I've got a bunch of zeros. So these are my non-identifiers and I've got liberals, conservatives, new Democrats block. Um, for the purposes of uh, this particular example, I'm gonna do uh, recode party ID um, zero equals missing. So I'm gonna gen a new variable, which is um, party ID cross tab. Tab party ID underscore cross tab. So if I were doing like a more advanced analysis or like doing lots of working things, I would want to do something substantive with like this 30% of folks that doesn't identify with any of these parties. Um, but for the purposes of a cross tab example, I'm just going to kick them out. Okay. Oh, label values party ID cross tab party. Boop, there we are. Great, so I've got like, liberals have a partisan lead, the conservatives are close behind, there's the NDP and there, there's the block there. Okay, so I'm gonna look at vote choice. And this is the idea that like vote choice, like partisanship doesn't super determine vote choice, but you can expect partisans, like if a party has a bunch of their partisans who are not voting for them, um, they've got a problem, right? So I wanna look at the effect of party ID, party ID, cross tab, vote choice. And then I've gotta do the if PES 19 province does either it, I want the, if it does equal Quebec, and then I wanna do it again for when it doesn't equal Quebec. Oh, and Quebec is 11, that's right. I'm gonna do my little squiggly boop. Okay, and then 11 two. All right, let's look at it inside Quebec first. Uh, so here you can see that, oh, no. It's DVIV, I have done that incorrectly. Boop, whoops, DVIV. All right, and this is why you can see, it's a really good example of why having, um, this one for Quebec is like 
bigger than it should be. So here you can see, uh, I'm going to run into like expected cell problems all over the place. This is too big. So look at, but look at this. You've got like liberals, like just go down this diagonal here <laughs> amongst like of liberal partisans, like they voted 90% liberal. Some of them voted NDP, like, and you've got like very small numbers here voting for other parties, but like, yeah, conservatives again, 90%. And again, like, not surprisingly, this idea between like, if people are just like, how did Alberta go NDP? Well, like conservatives, if they're going to hop a vote, they don't necessarily hop over in greater proportion to the liberals. They do you know, do Democrats, right? Here are the NDP. Uh, and here you can see people who identify as NDP, look at where their votes are bleeding to the block, to the block Québécois right there. Uh, and then look at the block here, like 90%, like almost 100% of block voters are voting, um, voting block. But you'll notice, like, it's telling me that the relationship is statistically significant, but I'm going to do a quick expected cell count. Uh, here I'm going to do the smallest by the smallest. So my smallest margin there is 57. Oh, this table is too big and it's kind of ugly. So 57 times 51 up there, that marginal, divided by the total number of cases, which is 461. Oh, it's six. So I'm okay with my expected cell frequencies, but this is still monstrous and kind of ugly and not easy to read. It's better if I'm doing it outside of Quebec. And this is what we find. Ah, uh, holy smokes, this is a strong relationship. Um, but you can see, like, it, this would be, if I was going to table, it would be, like, outside of Quebec, liberal partisans really vote liberal. And then if they're not going to vote liberal, they're likely to vote NDP next, but like it's a distant second. The conservatives, they've got a lock on their base, right? And then if you look at the new Democrats, so like four and five NDP supporters are voting for um, uh, for the NDP, but the NDP is also like bleeding partisans over to the liberals here. And this is the key thing, like party ID as a concept totally allows for this because it's identifying people who have this enduring connection to a party. Um, but don't necessarily uh, vote for them every time, right? So this would be somebody who's like, I'm a new Democrat, but this time I'm voting liberal, right? And this, these people would be like, I'm a liberal, but this time I'm voting NDP. Um, so that's the relationship between party ID and vote choice. And this is also importantly, how you go about um, running your cross tab if uh, you want to exclude Quebec or not, okay. Now, uh, let's say, I just want to try to do this as a particular control variable. Um, I want to see, yeah, if I just wanted to show what this looked like, if I wanted to do this for like a controlled, like a partial table thing, um, I know I've got the gender variable made, so I'm just going to do like, there is my table for men, and there is my table for women. So, like, don't listen to what I'm doing here because I don't have a logic here. This would be the idea that, uh, actually, no, I do have a logic. So this would be the idea that uh, we have a modern gender gap, which means that men are going to be more likely to vote conservative um, regardless of uh, their party identification, I guess. Uh, or actually, no, this was going to be the idea of source of spuriousness, right? So men are more likely to identify with, like, the conservative party and not the others. Women are going to be more likely to identify with um, the NDP or the liberals. And quite independent of that, you have reasons for men and women voting for different parties as well. Okay, so that's how I would set that up. So it would be the vote choice party ID if the province is not Quebec, my squiggly bit, and gender is men. Here, uh, I'm just looking back at my real, my original relationship. It's like statistically significant and my chi-square is massive. It remains statistically significant and I still have a giant chi-square. Like this is a replication of effectively of that relationship, particularly because like the chi-square is like little, so it's like 0.8. Okay. Uh, and then this is also a replication. Yeah. So gender is not a source of spuriousness here, but I just, that's exactly the, the thing I would have to do to like test.
forward there. Okay, so we've done part one where now you know how to like select provinces for vote choice um, and you know the syntax that you have to set up, right? So if you're doing vote choice, um, you have to have these, the, like either it is Quebec or it isn't. And then when you start to add your control variables, this is, this is what it would look like. Tab, dependent variable, independent variable. If province does not equal Quebec and my control variable is the first category. There you are. Good. All right. I'm going to take a break on this video because I think it's quite long. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to do regressions and weights. Stay tuned for part two.